Hi, this is the Way Out series. It is a collection of testimonies and revelations that can help you in your own healing journey. This is an online training on renewing your mind, inner healing, based on the way that's already behind me. This is not a few-step program, it is an encouragement and tools from someone on the way out to others on the way out. I believe that what meant a turning point for me will become yours as well. Have a great way out. Hi, it's the 12th uh, session of the Way Out series. In the previous one, I was talking about the season when I got back to ministry after two years of retreat and how God just challenged my boundaries uh, with leadership positions and new uh, areas of uh, ministry and how he challenged the lies regarding myself, what I would never do and things like that in my head. And um, now I'm gonna continue my life story. So I live in Budapest, I do ministry, I enjoy that. I, I'm kind of busy again, like I wasn't like very busy, like uh, just the same way uh, before I went to retreat, it didn't happen. But I like that there were like ministries waiting for me and uh, I love like meeting people and discipleship and all of that. Um, so I was having fun with it and um, sometimes I felt like oh um, maybe I'm a bit busy again um, but I lived alone so I had plenty of time on my own with Jesus and in silence so I felt like it was okay and um, I liked the way God just showed me new things and um, I loved like um, counseling people and and all of these things um, what was challenging in that season is that a lot of uh, um, youth ministries collapsed around me even ones that I was part of and I didn't understand what has happened and whose fault is that I thought this could never happen and still it happened this was my life this was my first family uh, and, and how could they go the wrong direction and fall apart and things like that and a lot of friends I looked up to and who were my my absolute idols and, and people I followed and they just burned out left ministry almost left God altogether and it was crazy to see that like all the misunderstandings and pains and uh, it was it wasn't happening to me I was doing okay but it was so hard to see it happen and it was also a confirmation at the same time that those people who were like healthy all their lives they they tried very hard to do everything in ministry and they were sacrificing a lot and I was happy for them and I was looking up to them and and I felt like back then that I can't do what they do because I'm not healed enough to do that so I'm just in recovery mode and let the healthy people shine and I'm not shining I'm just doing a little bit of ministry and giving as much space to God to work on me as possible and then I realized that, okay, this like doing ministry but not really giving myself to it is not wasn't selfish and it wasn't like I was lazy. Um, it was the will of God that I wasn't fully in it and I wasn't like sacrificing my whole healing process to ministry life. And because even the people who were kind of healthy they collapsed in it and they they got burned out and it would like really 
it could have devastated me if I tried to do what they done. And still my heart hurt for them. Like they got burned out, some of them so much that it was the level of mental mental health issue and um and, and depression and all of that. So uh I was very sad for them because I was like I've been there, don't go there. I know know what it what it's like. Like just don't do that. <laughs> um so it was good to realize that God was leading me into like this doing ministry but not really um and it was from him and uh, and that it was right that I I focus more on what God was doing in me than what God was doing through me and and I, I many times I felt like uh, maybe I'm silly maybe I'm lazy maybe I'm selfish but that's what I want to do and when I saw all my ministry fans like experiencing burnout I was like oh God was just simply protecting me and it was all him who convinced me that I shouldn't like give my all to uh, ministry work um to be honest uh, I reached the bottom line uh, just watching my ministry friends getting hurt and uh, and disappointed so even though no one hurt me I I was way too compassionate about their hurt and I had to learn to like set boundaries about like okay this is what is going on with you and I'm okay and I don't need to take your hurt um so it was hard to see them and it made me question everything like do I believe in the right God in the right gospel like it should work it should be working and it feels like it's failing who is wrong what is wrong what lie or what concept is wrong like it should all be just fine and it isn't um, am I the one who does it right because I'm feeling okay uh, and I shouldn't feel okay because I've always been like depressed and now I'm doing fine and all the healthy people are depressed like what is what is going on um, so I went back to, to depression a little bit for other people not for my own things and it sounds crazy but it did happen um, because you can go down to the sp on the spiral of depression following your own thoughts but you can do the same with others thoughts and observing others situation so i was it wasn't a long time uh in 2019 but it was quite low <laughs> and i had to realize that okay maybe the whole world is collapsing around me and it's gonna be all right for me like i'm gonna have my world with god where only i and god exists and it's okay if other people like do what they do my best ministry fans the most spiritual guys everyone you can do what you do my world is a different thing and there is a godly complacency, I think, when you are just like, I can't help it. Like, if I can help, I help you, but I won't let this negativity destroy my life as just as much as it destroyed yours. So yeah I just realized that other people's problem is not definitely mine when I can help it is mine but when I can't it's like no it's not mine um so it was a great lesson to learn um and, and there were times when I had like uh, this 
cry attacks when I couldn't stop crying and I woke up in the, in the night uh, thinking about like how much my heart aches for people and I was like praying for them and all that but still it was was something that I shouldn't have a lot uh, into my heart that much um so when God convinced me that just be with him, be with me, it's okay if everyone destroys their lives, we're gonna have a great life together. Um, and I had this, you know, this new sense of freedom and just hanging out with Jesus and, and yeah, so a new passion for like experiencing and enjoying God. And then COVID hit, and the whole the first reaction to COVID in my country was complete shutdown. So uh, later it was more easy. Now it's quite quite okay. But the first reaction was that you were only allowed to go out of your home to buy food, um, and there were a few months like that, and. Even though I wasn't that much into ministry, it was an identity crisis for me. Like, what do I do? I loved spending the mornings with God and the nights with God. And in the afternoon, I loved, you know, meeting people and counseling people and do something. And there was no doing something phase of my day. Uh, I don't... I never had like a, a, a daily routine or something, but after a few days of like not doing anything outwardly, outward, like nothing outside and nothing towards others, it's like, what do I do? Like I, I'm, I'm, um, I'm useless. I, I don't know what I am and who I am and whether I'm worth anything. It wasn't the long, it, it was just a few days. Like, wh why should I get up in the morning? I wasn't depressed. I was serious about this question. Like, what can I do? <laughs> and then God just told me that, you know what? When you were all busy, you were dreaming about a phase when you have time to create again and you have time to write and, and do online stuff and and just uh, study deeper and things like that. You were dreaming of that and now here it is and then you dream of going back, doing busy things and, and when you are busy, you are dreaming about what is going on right now. Like, don't you see that it is a deception? Like the enemy always portrays the situation you are not in as something better than what you are in so that you are not able to enjoy the present moment the present season and then it just hit me like yeah that's what i was dreaming of a lot of time to create again i i almost like forgotten about arts and that i was creative because i thought it was more effective to like counsel people and pray for them and preach and things like that so I left art altogether and then I was just like reoccupying this field and and God just convinced me that okay it's not about efficiency it's 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 worth your time you can it's okay that you do something just because you enjoy it and and it's okay if you don't think it's the most effective way of like leading people to me um so <sighs> this time i was like creating a lot and i rediscovered how much i loved it and and that there was a, a hidden part of me that was suppressed during the ministry years and so I was really enjoying it. 
I spend a lot of time like with uh, with God, but in the afternoons I went out to the park, the only place you were allowed to go, uh, except for grocery stores. So I went to the park and just sat there and I was just writing there or like spend time with God. This was my office and my living room, the park. And I had great times with God there. Like it was like most productive time of my life. Like I searched for all the long forgotten uh, poems and uh, short stories I wrote and posts and, and pictures of my paintings and I just started to post them so I had a lot of fun with it and that, that was the time when I started to like date God <laughs> like I was literally planning out dates like going to a beautiful spot of the city just to be with God there uh, and it was a lot of fun because no one dared to go out of their homes so I was like you know this is the time of my life no one is at the tourist destinations everything is empty I can be just there and enjoy God so I had great times and I still do that dating with God thing it, it just feels so good um, and this was the time when I started to like enjoy the the basic things like buying food and cooking something delicious buying a new clothes uh, buying stuff for my room my room wasn't decorated at all in any sense it was just a place with white walls and because I was traveling I didn't care and then I was just like I tried to make it pretty and and I just started to like own my life and enjoy my life uh, because ministry made me feel like my life wasn't like really important at all it was okay if I didn't enjoy something as long as it was effective <laughs> And I thought that's how kingdom works. And God just showed me like, oh, now the way of my kingdom is that you love your life. Like I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. It means that like even a better life <laughs> than you think you could have. Mm. And it surely doesn't mean a less good life. So, because I, I spent most of my life in depression, it was a new experience to like waking up, enjoying the fact that I have a nice flat, enjoying the fact that I can make a hot chocolate, I can go for a walk, I can cook something very good. Like I never had time for those things. Or I never, I could never take time to do them. Like really, being present in them and it was so good like I was like a little kid enjoying the most ridiculous things like cutting tomatoes like almost in ecstasy like that was the time when I was like <laughs> I started to enjoy so silly things um, and it was a lonely time like I was alone like almost all the time but I really had to learn how to have God as a company like literally like talking to him in the morning like 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 to another person and waking up to him like as if he was laying next to me um, so it helped me to like experience him even more personal because I had to he was he was my only only company for a long time and very rarely I met someone and they were devastated they were so sad they couldn't deal with this COVID situation and quarantine and all that and I had to hide my joy like 
I tried to be compassionate and in the inside I was like I'm having the time of my life I, I can't tell you that but I'm happier than ever <laughs> And of course, I'm I'm way happier now than I was back then. And there is a way higher perspective ahead of me. But it was the, the highest time of my life <laughs> uh, up until that time. Um, so yeah, I was I was I was having a great time. And when this very strict uh, uh, season was over by the summer and um, some of the rules were like um, eliminated I was like oh I'm so sad like I don't want my normal life back <laughs> I love this season <laughs> um, the other thing about this season was that I was watching a lot of YouTube videos, like I had uh, so much time, a lot of teachings and um, I even joined um, an online theology um, in Kena New Wine Seminary and in Hungary it is like no one does it, no one knows about it. Um, and I was so happy to do that the greatest testimony about this was that you weren't allowed to go out on the streets at all after 8 p.m. and accidentally all my um, lessons uh, on, from the te theology started at 8 p.m. in Hungary. Of course, no one pays attention, obviously, to when uh, a session starts in Hungarian time uh, from Portland, but <laughs> it was something from the Holy Spirit. So everyone was like, oh, I can't go out, I can't do anything. And I was like, okay, I'm having my fun time at home. So it was it was amazing, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I already had a season when all the things I believed about God and about the gospel had been challenged and flipped outside, uh, upside down. And this was the second round. <laughs> um, God was introduced to me in such a way that I haven't seen him before. I realized that what I thought God to be was more like Satan and and this fabrication of God in my head made of theology and Bible verses and pieces of teachings is nothing but an idol made in God's image and has nothing to do with him. For a long time I had these two gods, one of them this construct of Bible verses and teachings who wasn't really good, like he was good but and he can he could get angry quite easily so no one to be not someone to be trusted and there was this other god i experienced every day and he was always kind and always loving and he was always next to me and he was a fun guy to hang out hang out with and i knew i'm gonna stick to that what i experienced and that other god in my head i don't know what to do with it and Listening to this many teachings, I, I realized that, okay, this construct can be destroyed. It's not true at all. And actually, the God I experience and know to be unconditionally loving is the true one. And even the Bible verses 
support that one like I can let the other construct and idol burn to the ground because the word of God will be still true because even the word of God supports the that God and confirms the God I, I experience and know and love um, so it was a and even comparing to this uh, good God I experienced, I felt like the God that is being shown to me is way much better. Like, I never thought that this was so good. And every time I discovered something of God's goodness, I felt so much better the next day. I felt like all the... <laughs> all the burdens of the world had been lifted off my shoulders and the reason why I tell this is that mental health issues can be very much related to your view on God and how you see him and your image of God and how you think his nature to be so related like and it's not like it wasn't like um a conscious thing on my part like when I woke up feeling low I wasn't like oh I, c I couldn't please God today it was just an impression in the back of my mind how much I should have done already and how much I and how I should feel towards God and unconsciously there was a burden of that and when it was lifted I felt like where does this freedom come from like this was the time when I started to feel joy without any reason so recovering recovering from depression it was like I knew how to resist bad thoughts how not to take them seriously um, how to how to be so drunk in the presence of God that my mind is not able to think on depression but this pointless without reason kind of joy was something new for me like I'm not doing anything holy I'm not even I'm not doing anything joyful I'm just happy just because <laughs> and it was and I didn't understand first but it was like, you know, this is the original state of your person, this perfect joy and peace. The presence of God is the ground zero, your um, default mode. And all the other lies are above it and built uh, above it. And maybe you can't see this reality of your person because it is covered by all the other stuff. But the reality of the person be beyond all those lies and thoughts is this presence of God and when every time a lie had been lifted I realized like oh I'm so happy I've never been that happy <laughs> um, so it was <laughs> it was crazy to see that um, spending alone months with depression and suicidal thoughts background is not the most positive script like that's what that's what doesn't help someone and still it was the best time of my life in every sense <laughs> um so your recovery can be helped by the circumstances and the change of the circumstances for the better but it is not a requirement like it felt like everything was collapsing and I felt always better like your healing and your well-being is not dependent on 
your circumstances and they can go backwards and your happiness can go upwards and it can happen and i know that god wants to like give us full life in every sense but even if it doesn't happen you are your joy and happiness has is not related to it yeah so this was the time when i felt that god is good like really really good and so unconditionally good that i can't mess up my life like i can't fall out of his will i can't make him not want to bless me or be with me i just can't mess it up like he is loving and caring and providing just because who he is and i can rely on that and that was the time when i started to like trust him for for anything like no one had money back then and i had no money before that like i was a full-time minister so i lived on like air or something i lived on what people gave me accidentally and it, i was doing okay uh, but i wasn't ministering anymore so how do i get money at all i don't have gofundme and i don't collect money in any sense so i only live by what people give me when they feel like to and all of a sudden i didn't do anything so how do i make a living and i was like i can't even believe that god would provide for me like i don't know how to believe in that i just know that he is good enough to do that even if i mess everything up and i just started to like think about that like because he is good he will solve it even if i act and think the contrary and this was happening like people from canada and italy started to send me money f- just because the lord told them to do so and i had more money than ever before and i was even able to bless my other ministry friends who were like complete <laughs> who were in trouble <laughs> in that season um it was so so funny um i was like able to buy like gifts to people to my family i had a lot of time to do that of course so yeah it was so good to see that yeah god is not good because i do something rude and because i react and think well god is good because he is good and that's all like i'm not even in the equation i'm not part of this equation uh he does it all because of who he is and i can rely on that and i can be as silly as possible and i can mess up everything i can he still will be good and i can absolutely expect that like he will be good contrary to what i do and think and behave and of course i won't i won't be about like making as much doing as much sin as possible i'm not like that but it was so good to feel that his goodness is that unconditional um and so much burden had been lifted off my shoulders like i didn't know that there were burdens related to god and, and later i realized that christians many times christianity doesn't help mental illness it only makes it worse many cases if we teach a, 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 a 
a conditional love and conditional gospel, it makes things worse because you need to care for your family and your life and your bills and you even have this extra burden of being good enough for God to bless you and to heal you and to provide for you and all that and you just can't make it and even if you can make it you still can't enjoy it because you are under the performance to to make it happen so you never win and it was crazy to see how much more freedom was available for me and how much more joy when I just dropped many typical Christian stereotypes about how God blesses you and how God is to you towards you. Um, even a little piece of understanding of God's goodness made my life so much better. I know it's not just about making your life so much better, but accidentally it causes that as well. Like, yeah, and many mental health issues can exactly uh, can directly come from the way we teach God to be and the way we think God to be. Um, of course, he, if he just punishes you for things and sends you to hell if you don't behave and and withdraws his blessings and you fall out of his will and grace when you do this and that it's a huge pressure and of course many times it's not that extreme that it makes you go crazy there are a lot of people like that um but there are like this department in mental hospitals that are for Christians who think that they committed the unforgivable sin and things like that. Or they are destined to hell. Or, and there, are, there are things like that. But you can believe like lies that are compatible with life. Like, I'm a little bit under pressure, but it's okay. And when I understood this goodness of God, just a little bit of it but when I had this new revelation um, I started to understand why all my ministry friends got burned out <laughs> like oh thinking that you have to perform for God and be good enough and be effective enough and make make changes in the kingdom and all that make changes for the kingdom it's just like I couldn't have lived under this pressure for five minutes and you have been ministering like that for five years like you are amazing like how could you do that I I couldn't have done that <laughs> and I also I felt sad like if if I could only demonstrate in some way how good he is and how much you don't need to do anything to amaze him how much fun like ministry could be <sighs> yes one of the things I, I learned is that there is no such a thing as an angrier stricter um, morose God behind Jesus' back that every now and then shows up to punish me. That was a big deal. And um, yeah, how much unconditional his goodness and love and providence is. Like there is, there are these Christianese conditions. It is unconditional, but if you uh, open doors to the enemy or if you make a sin or um, if you don't follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and that, this and that then then you can get out of the grace you can you can be um, 
punished for it or like when we are more grace-minded we say that we won't be compatible with the blessings of God and we have all these ideas and we repackage it according to each theological stream but the basic concept is that you can make God less good than he is in case you do this and that and just just this understanding of like I can't mess it up and even if I do whatever he will still give his presence and he will still provide for me and he will still do whatever just because he is good and his acts are only relying on his nature and never on my acts and and behavior it just yeah it just started to cause such a liberation in me i was challenged in the inside like when i started to like be a leader i was challenged from the outside i was I was being pushed into situations by God that were like challenging my lies and things like that. But now I was I was challenged like sitting in my chair at home. <laughs> oh, God was just like, do you want this greater freedom? Then drop this God you used to believe in. Um, do you want to be completely free? Okay, this idol that you taught God to be should be burned down to the ground and it was hard at times because i had to give up everything i believed in and it was joyful because every time i gave up some light about god i felt like my whole life changed for changes for the better there is a series of image of god um one two three uh this is where i share what i learned in this season how much better i i think god to be now and what god has shifted in my head about his nature um so maybe it can help you image of god um uh, one two three um the other thing you can do uh, is that you listen to people who teach on, on on grace and the goodness of God, like Andrew Womack or Joseph Prince or John Crowder or William Paul Young or C. Baxter Kruger, guys like that. Rod Williams, Matt Spinks. So you can check check out people who are like who have a deep understanding on on the nature of God um, because it has a mental health effect very much like many times we don't know why we feel pressure why we are anxious why we can't be as free as we want to be and many times it's just something we believe God to be what he is not actually and um, and this rewriting of our image of God can happen when we are just with God and he just reveals himself to us um, and it happened to me a lot but it can happen that you allow to be open to teachings that seem crazy and too 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 hyper grace and too edgy and you allow God to destroy the false image you have of him in your head and it's very sad Uh, for many aspects it is very sad but it's a mental health series so I'm gonna only talk about this aspect one of the reasons that I didn't have the same burnout uh, as all of my ministry friends, almost all of them, uh, or the majority of them, is that God, by His grace, has introduced Himself 
to me and he showed me how good he actually is and how much I cannot mess it up can I cannot ruin my life how can I how much I cannot fall out of his wheel we are gonna have an exercise on that I think um, if you're interested check out the image of God series uh, the links are uh, in the description below um, and uh, I wish that you start to see God you know in in such a good light <laughs> in a such a real way that it would cause bondages and sadness and lies automatically um, fall down and that it would cause joy bursting out of you for no particular reason just because you know how free you are and how much you cannot mess mess your life up I'm excited for you and you can send me your testimonies and comments um, I'm excited for what is going to happen to you God bless you thank you for watching this video I hope it was a blessing for you this course is completely free of charge however the production and editing has a cost and I wanted to produce this series in the best possible quality and make it available to everyone absolutely free on YouTube. So if you feel led to, please contribute with any amount to the production costs. All the donation options and the payment methods are available in the description.